Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Sam Buller from 444 Create More, and today we're bringing our first episode live with my good friend Keyshawn. What's up, bro? Chris. That was crisp. Yes, All sir. right. And today we're going to be talking about post production. So I'm going to walk you through a few of my editing tips and kind of walk you through my process of what it looks like to shoot a video with me and how we did some of the stuff on his video, Nirvana. So without further ado, let's hop on in. <laughs> So Keyshawn, what kind of experiences have you had seeing the behind the scenes of editing? Um, I haven't really ever sat in on like a editing process session, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I just see it. And now it's getting moody. All right. <laughs> I guess I just see it like somewhere within the process, but never really like the workflow and the amount of passion that goes into each and every scene and the decisions behind each and every scene too. So I'm excited to see you today and learn more about that today. Well, that's exactly what we're here for, brother. One more time. <laughs> Let's hop into this project. The first thing you'll notice is I already have a timeline made. If you haven't already, you can go ahead and create a timeline by right clicking in your master folder and clicking timelines and create a new timeline. All right, y'all, so the first thing I do whenever I'm making a video is I create a specific folder for the videos, and then I create a specific folder for the audio. Once that's done, I hop over into my favorite NLE, DaVinci Resolve. I create those same folders within the file browser. One thing I like to do when making videos, Keyshawn, is I actually like to label the clips according to the scene. One way that I like to do that, highlight all of them, right click, and you can click the clip color. Let's say all of these scenes kind of look yellow to me, so I'm gonna make them yellow. So if I were to go ahead and drag this onto our timeline, it's already yellow. The idea here is to make it so that when I'm looking at this, I can cut between the scenes just to kind of make it look more natural. Visually, it's gonna help me when I'm editing to just kind of make things faster, speed things up. So a next important step, you can see on my screen, we are having real struggle trying to scrub through the video. See how laggy it is? This is because this is the 8K file just playing back. One way that we can make this better is by creating proxies. So Keyshawn, do you know what a proxy is? No. So basically what a proxy is, is it's something that the original video file can reference so that when you're playing it back, it can actually play back at a normal speed. So for higher higher size files, this is super crucial for you know quick turnarounds. You know, you wanted the project back within two weeks. So this is how we're gonna get that. So if you'd like to create proxies, they're not necessary, but for these 8K files, we really had to, just so I could get this quickly turned around. So one way you can do it, go ahead and highlight all of your clips, and then you're gonna go to File, Media Management. You're gonna choose a location where you want the proxies to go. For me, I already made the proxies, but you can just choose wherever you want it to go, preferably beside the actual raw video or wherever you wherever you have it located already. It just simplifies things if you gotta go and find it later. Once you have that down, go ahead and select Selected Media Pool Clips. And because I already selected all of the clips that I want in my media pool, that is going to select those clips. Once you're over into the transcode settings, you wanna hop over to the video side, and this is where you're gonna be able to choose your video format. So I try to make the literal worst proxies because I only use them when I'm not color grading. It really comes down to what your computer can handle, how much space you have. But if you want a low impact format, I always say, Go mp4 once you're done with that you would just press start this whole project's about 513 gigs that is a lot of information to process so that's why we have to make proxies you can just go ahead and press start and since i already have them made i'm just going to press cancel once the proxies are done you're going to have to actually link them manually one way you can do that is you highlight all your clips again and you press link proxy media and then you choose wherever your folder is mine are already linked so i'm just going to press cancel the next step you're going to go to playback up here on your top ribbon and then you're going to go choose use proxy media if available. And then the next thing I like to do to even amp up those proxy medias, I like to use timeline proxy mode. And this basically makes my timeline visibly a lower resolution so that I can scrub through better. If you look now, now we can actually scrub all the way through at full speed to kind of get a bigger picture of, you know, what the actual camera movements are, how those video files played back. It's quick enough to edit with, and this will save you so much time. You know, if you're working with big files, even 4K files, sometimes uh, computers nowadays have a hard time running it. I mean, 
even you know like a lot of effects on you know certain audio tracks it can really lag your computer and it's the same way like these 8k raw files they're trying to pull fill the ram bro yeah yeah so for a lot of music videos you're gonna have to sync up the audio there's a few different ways you can do that for this one i did it by ear simply because the files we were working with could not be processed by pluralize that is what i would typically use to sync audio from a video because these are 8k raw files i actually had to do it by hand so that took a bit but i already have this done we already know it's done. So now that I got that audio synced up, Keyshawn, how did you kind of want the video edited? Did you want something more hard cut? Did you want effects? Like, how did you want the video to kind of flow? Um, I honestly wanted it to be very cinematic and performative. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we utilize hard cuts and slight editing, we might be able to achieve that. Awesome. All right, well, let's get to it. Without further ado, bada bing bada boom. <laughs> so now that I got that edit done, one thing I usually like to do is tap in with the client and make sure that you know they approve of everything. Keyshawn is already approved, so this is where we're gonna tap into our color grading process. So Keyshawn, do you know what color grading is? Um, honestly, I just mainly have like a broad idea of it, but not very technical understanding. And I hope that today, I can learn some more about it. <laughs> Roll intro. So before we even made the video, Keyshawn and I actually discussed kind of what looks he was going for. And you know, he wanted a more cinematic feel. So that's one thing that we're gonna kind of sit down and walk through you know, just in the color grade. Um, so can you describe, you know, what you initially described to me when we were first making this video, how you wanted the color to look? Um, I wanted it to look very Cine, cine, I don't know cinematic. Say. Yeah, just cin, you know, C I N E. Yeah, like, yeah. Just like that. Just like that. And I wanted it to be like simple, but like a perfect accentuation to the already beautiful locations that we we're shooting at. So I'm gonna walk you guys through how we actually achieve that look. Um, so first things first, you can go ahead and go to your color tab. You might notice this still looks like a proxy. That's because it is. So when I am color grading, I always turn that off. But the first thing that I do is I make sure the timeline proxy mode is off so that I can find the most in focus area. First thing you got to do is find your hero frame. So that's where mine is. So the one thing you can do, turn your proxy media off and then we're going to be greeted by this colored image. Now this is already colored. So I'll go ahead and turn off all of my nodes pops back to a log image. So the first node I always like to start with is basically just my noise reduction node. Uh, that's like a staple for me. Every camera is going to have noise. So what I like to do is kind of soften it out a bit. But that kind of looks like for me is just kind of mellowing out a little bit of the, you know, in camera noise. And I always kind of like to add that back with a little bit of film grain just to kind of make the image look a little bit less soft, but also a little bit more natural. So working with raw files is a real pain, not only because of the file size but because of how hard it is to play them back but since we have proxies it's kind of lessened the impact of that and it's kind of given us the opportunity to make it a little bit more manageable so that we can kind of access these cool features this is the cool thing about shooting with raw files you get a lot of access to in-camera data that you wouldn't with normal files the next node we have my primary corrections and this is kind of where I make sure that my shadows and highlights are in the right area you know I want that I wanted the image to kind of look really balanced really cinematic so I can go ahead and turn that on and you see it kind of brought the shadows up a bit and turned the highlights down just a bit now this next node is a very unique node this is halation what halation does as you can see here if we're looking at the very very small highlights right there I go ahead and turn this on and it adds a slight, slight glow. This is gonna add a little bit more character to your image. It's very subtle. You don't have to use it a lot, but sometimes exaggerating a bit can be a little bit classy. So the next note in my timeline is the actual color space transform. And this is what's gonna help me get an actual film look. DaVinci has their own cool little uh, film looks built in already. The way that you can do this is by putting your input gamma to whatever your video was shot at. Since this is raw, I have a few options so I can change the gamma to to any of these the next thing I can do is choose Cineon film lock and the next thing I turn this on and now we have a classic film stock Kodak 2383 basically it's a LUT and it kind of applies that sort of color science that the actual film stock would have after that this is where I add the film grain 
and then a little bit more primary balance. I wanted to kind of darken the image a bit, bring it down because the image looked a little bit too flat. So this is kind of where I added some contrast, things to kind of bring out the image, just like the film look that you wanted. And the next is kind of where I kind of brought back that texture. Uh, so I use this texture pop effect to kind of really, really sell that 8K feel. So as you can see with this texture pop effect, there's a lot that we can do with it. If I go ahead and turn it on, I have already tuned it so it kind of brings out that texture. And you can see that it kind of complements the halation already. You see the little red dots? Mm -hmm. So this kind of brings out the image more to kind of make it look very, very sharp. It's already in 8K, so it was super sharp. But this is kind of like the final touch to br bring that from a soft looking image to just something really cinematic. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and copy all of the color grade, fine tune it for each individual scene. And once that's done, I'll show you the final product. That is where we'll ask for a revisionist from the client. So the first thing you're going to notice about my timeline, it's super colorful. I really like to keep my timeline organized by color coordination just because I'm more of a visual person. And with this, I have my forest scenes in green, my desert scenes in yellow, my bridge scenes in pink because they kind of appeared a little bit more pink. Not that that's important. This kind of helps me stay organized uh, just to give me more of a visual reference for how much these scenes are actually playing out over the course of the entire video. And this also helps me balance out it a bit more, you know, if this is a more a location heavy video like this one was. So you'll also notice that I've kept the original audio on each clip. This is important to me because sometimes I'll have to go back and kind of shift a clip a bit if it's a little bit out of sync. And and just having that audio there really helps me make sure that I don't have to go back and resync everything visually. Huge tip, just keep the audio there and you'll save yourself a bunch of time in the future. I know it's gonna look cleaner if you just have the singular audio track, but at the end of the day, if you need to go back and make changes, you're not gonna wanna have to do it if you don't have the audio. <laughs> so Keyshawn, thanks for coming out and sitting through this whole process with me. I know a lot of people wouldn't actually do this, allow you in their studio just to you know, go through the whole editing process with you. But this is a pretty unique opportunity and I'm just glad that you're here because I wanted to kind of share this process with people, you know, because I feel like this whole channel is just about creating more and worrying less, you know, because I feel like there's a lot of FUD out there. And, you know, it's my job to kind of sort through that and just, you know, really put out valuable information for people to kind of, you know, build their skills. And get better. And worry less. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. This definitely helped me understand the process of editing. Usually I'm mainly uh, an artist and actor, but being able to see this side of the process it definitely teaches me more about video and how it's edited and how it's shot. Yeah, this information for artists is just beneficial. I'd say if you come across any scenario where you're able to get in on like a session like this and just understand like how your videographer works, I think that it'd be tenfold like beneficial for the both of you guys so that you can understand like how each other works because think about it, if you're an artist recording in the studio and you have a videographer there, like he's seeing your entire process. So to bring everything like full circle and really have that link with each other, I'd say just sit in with with your videographer and like chill see how he does things um and use that knowledge to like help you when you're on set and acting or performing for a video hey so on our next episode i'm gonna show you what this is and what that weird contraption is behind me so stay tuned for how they can take your productions to the next level peace <laughs>